There was a young man by the name of Joshua. He understood God's lawyer named Moses. And no doubt the people said to the young man who took over the duties of the leadership of millions of Israelites after Moses had gone home with the Lord, he gave them this tremendous text, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Tonight, in the message, I'd like to speak on why these friends didn't quit, and personally, why I didn't quit. In the first place, I didn't see any reason to quit. I, I saw nothing to quit for. And uh, I want to speak with you. There's a question, and the Bible said, Watchman, what are the night? Well, he said, The morning cometh, and also the night. I believe there's thunder in our American thicket tonight. Trouble such as we've never seen before, and I give briefly as quickly as I can, and I hope you listen to every word and keep everything perfectly quiet in the auditorium. 1930 some odd, we voted the demon in that destroys every nation that's ever been destroyed, every nation that ever died, died drunk. America is a drunkard nation tonight. Nothing Christian about drinking liquor. And so back in 1930 some odd, we signed our death nail. A little later on, because of the low standards and lack of Bible enlightenment, we began to introduce immorality known as the pill. And then the pill brought murder, and America has become a murdering nation. Number three, America has become a nation of sodomites. Those three sins will ruin any nation on the face of the earth. No nation ever got as wicked as America is and survived very long unless she had a revival. Our days are numbered. No problem to read the handwriting on the wall. We've invited three judgments. Famine pestilence, and war. And America will not escape. I'm going to give you three reasons why I'm not going to quit and why I haven't quit and why these men have not quit. God didn't quit. Amen. You know, when God put Adam and Eve, had no sin, put Adam and Eve in the garden, and they sinned and hid from God. He could have just quit. He could have just plowed them under and said, well, I'll just, that's not working out. God didn't quit. God went to an innocent animal and blood was shed. And of course, Eve had set up her little sewing circle of apron fig leaves and God got the blood covering and bought it and gave it. He didn't quit. God could have quit when the evil imaginations of the heart was always evil. But he said, no, Noah, I want you to build an ark. And Noah built an ark, and only eight people got in. But uh, that was God's seed to keep the world going. God never has quit, and God never will quit. I realize, and folks, I'll admit, uh, that I've been under the juniper tree. I imagine most of us have pitched pity parties, but I've never built a house under the juniper jungle. Never have. I'm not satisfied with anything less than victory. Second, I didn't quit. I will not quit because Jesus 
didn't we? Yeah. You know, I read again today the great text over in the book of Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, and it's actually Isaiah 61 and verse 1. Jesus said, I've been anointed to preach the gospel to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, deliver the captains, and recovering of sight to the blind, set at liberty them that are bruised, preach the acceptable year of the Lord. In that one chapter, four times, Jesus preached. He said, I must preach, and that's why I've been sent. You know, I think the first time he preached, and that was it, he came back to the hometown, not 33 years of age, maybe 30 years of age, went to the synagogue. He preached a marvelous message on the very thing, the ministry that we're carrying on right here. Everything. I mean, he said he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Heal the brokenhearted and all the rest. Now then, when he got through preaching, you know what happened? His hometown shoved him out to a hill. And we're going to throw him over. But dear friend, it happened to be the wrong hill. It didn't have a cross on it. And Jesus walked through the midst of them. He could have gotten discouraged, but he didn't. He could have quit, but he didn't. I tell you another time that he could have quit, but he didn't. In the garden, while he bled, his disciples blundered and slept. And all alone he suffered for me and for you, but he didn't quit. I think he could have gotten a little weary and discouraged in the courtroom. Yonder before Pilate, when Pilate no doubt said, Where are your witnesses? And not one person showed up. Where's all those people you've healed? Not one person showed up. Folks, Jesus didn't quit. He set his face like a flint to go to Jerusalem and the cross and would not come down. He gave his life for you and for me. Jesus didn't quit. I think he could have gotten weary when Pilate said to him, who's going to witness? And Jesus said, I'll witness. You know, I thought about it today in a different light. They said to him, are you going to take the Fifth Amendment? Are you really the Christ? Are you going to incriminate yourself? And Jesus said, I am. Jesus died on his own testimony. Mark 14, 62, when they asked him the question, he said, I am the Christ, the Messiah that was to come. Dear friend, Jesus was never ashamed to represent himself as God's Son and our East Messiah, an eternal and wonderful Savior. As I come to the close of this brief message, I think as Jesus came to die on Calvary, that surely was the darkest day the world has ever known. There was only one semblance of mercy shown, and that's when the sun refused to shine, and at least shaded that horrible scene of the Son of God suffering on Mount Calvary. Jesus hung on the cross and could not die and would not die until he'd given every drop of blood, because the life of the flesh is in the blood. I've given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for the soul, for it is the blood that makes the atonement for the soul. Jesus, while he was on that old rugged cross, set up a rescue mission. Built an altar.